once again to open the doors of your word so that we may understand what the Spirit is saying to the churches. We knew you are the only God who is able to guide, to instruct, and to help us. Father, many may have come today hoping to know you more, seeking for favor which only you can provide. Lord, we ask for wisdom, we ask for knowledge, and we ask for instruction so that we will be equipped to deal with what you have to share with us today. Lord, no man can know you except you show yourself to him. We are not coming with our own words, neither are we coming to learn our own knowledge, nor to interpret the Bible based on our understanding. We are coming to you so that you will write your word upon our hearts, and upon our lips you will put them. Lord, you will teach your name to as many that will listen. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today our topic under understanding prophecy is letter to the church of Philadelphia. What was Jesus' message to the church of Philadelphia in Revelation? In Revelation chapter 3 from verse 7, we understand the angels to the messenger or the church or the assembly in Philadelphia write, these are the words of the Holy One, the true one who was, who has the keys of David, who open and no one can shut, who shuts and no one can open. The God we are talking about here is the God that has the keys of David that has the ability to open any door. No matter the old doors you are going through in your life, no matter how difficult, that door has been shut against you. It might be your business, it might be your trade, it might be your finance, it might even be the doors of blessing and favor, the door of deliverance, the door of salvation in your life that the enemy has locked. The Lord Jesus has a good news for you today. Because this message, though, is a message centered on prophecy. It's not given to prophetic experts or for pastors. This message is given to believers so that we can use it to save life while we still have time on earth. And for we to save life, the Lord says his wish above all things is that we should prosper and be in good state of health, even as our soul prosper in the Lord. The wish of God above every other thing on earth is for you to prosper. So, your prosperity is part of the blessing that God will unlock today. Your favor is part of the blessing God will unlock. Your healing is part of the favor God will unlock this night. God is going to unlock the keys of your blessing because he's the only one that can open doors and nobody, living or dead, has the right to shut. He is the only one that can shut the door. No power can open. And we record Jesus' message to the sixth of the seven churches addressed in Revelation chapter 2 to 3. The Philadelphia church is the recipient of this letter. Philadelphia is a city in Asia Minor, modern day Turkey. On the Imperial Coast Road, an important trade route. The message is from the Lord Jesus Christ through an angel or a messenger, like reference to the pastor or to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, he wrote. This was not John's personal message to this believer. It was a message from the Lord who identified himself as him who is holy and true. Holy and true. He is not only holy but truthful. Who holds the keys of David? And what he opened, no one can shut. And what he shut, no one can open. This description of Jesus emphasizes his holiness, his sovereignty, and his authority. The reference to the keys of David is an allusion to the Messianic prophecy. In Isaiah chapter 22, 
verse Isaiah 22, verse 22. Let us read and see what Isaiah 22, verse 22, talk about Jesus Christ. Isaiah 22, verse 22. Isaiah 22, verse 22. I read. It says, And the keys of the house of David I will lay upon his shoulder. He shall open, and no one shall shut. He shall shut, and no one shall open. That is what God said about Christ. He has the key. If you believe that God, who cannot lie, says to you that the keys of the house of David is given to Christ and you are the offspring of Christ through faith in him. That means the key has been delivered unto you. That whatever you open on earth is open in heaven. Whatever you bind as a believer is bound in heaven. That means Christ has handed over to you the authorities of the kingdom of heaven. That as a Christian, whatever we bound on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we lose on earth is lost in heaven. And Jesus is the one who opened and shut. No one can say to him no. If Jesus is the one that can open the doors that the enemy has shut against you, and no authority, living or dead, can say to him, what do I do? Then why is Christian so full of fear? Today we have believers who are selective about the location of their mission or the place where their gospel can strive. Some neglect the work of God in pursuit of hunger, in pursuit of daily bread, means things that are irrelevant and immaterial to the gospel. They forgot that the Lord who said to them, I am the one who has the key can open doors where no door is. He can set free even where no freedom exists. And I said the Lord build a house. They that labor, they labor in vain that build it. So no matter your efforts and human character and strength, trying to build a house without God will be just a wasted effort because all your labor will be in vain. That's what we see today chaos in the world, the calamities in country. Every year some, in some country four years we elect new leaders and when we elect new leaders we are happy. We celebrate that oh, these leaders we just elected, he's going to be our man peace. He's going to do all the good things that the other leader has faced to do. But sorry for us. Only to find out that the man we elected is worse than the man that was there before him. Why are we in such predicament? Is because we have failed to recognize that God is the one that can build, and He's the only one that can open and which no man can shut. That no matter every human effort, all our labor is in vain without the Lord. It is vain for us to wake up early, rise up, and go to our jobs, do all hard work, hoping to get blessing from it, or to come back with a leaking pocket. The Lord. Is the one that grants favor to those that trust in him. And he is telling you from here, confirming to the Philadelphia church, Fide means love, confirming to the church that love him, that look, if you actually love me, I will give you the keys of heaven. That keys of heaven that I'm going to give you, we need the blessing you struggle so hard in life to be able to lose, I will be able to open for you. No man can shut it. And I will be able to lock every evil doors against you that no power can open it. And that is the key that God has given to the saints. And if we truly believe we are the children of God, we should know we are possessor of such key. And being a possessor of such key, that means we are protected with strength and dignity beyond that which the world can ever comprehend. So I know indeed that the Lord has created us, the believers, with strength for the battle. He has taught us that if we fall in love with him, that he will give us the key. Brethren, today as Christians, 
Do you see yourself as possessing that key? Or do you see yourself shaking by fear? When your enemy cough, you run and hide under the table? Remember, in the triumphant entry into Jerusalem, when Jesus said to the apostles, Go into the nearby town, you will see an ox, the fold of a coat, tied with the fold, the coat tied with each other. Lose it and bring it. But the disciple did not ask Jesus Christ, who owed that much? Or, how are we going to pay for it, since we have no money in this way? Nobody asked such questions. Even though those questions may have been in their hearts, they never cared to ask, Oh Lord, you have set up an important mission, but where are we going to get money to pay for the house? Or the acts. And the Lord Jesus said to them, If anybody asks you, he knows what was in their heart. He said, If anybody asks you, tell him, The Lord have need of it. The Lord have need of it. That is enough to open door. If anybody asks you why you need that job, tell him, The Lord has need of it. If anybody asks you, why you need that money? Tell him the Lord has need of it. And straight away it will be released. If anybody tell you why you need that healing, tell him the Lord has need of it. If anybody asks you why you need that beauty, tell him God needs it. Straight away it will be released. Just like if the axe was released, that blessing will be loosed. So that you can go forward and fulfill God's obligation for your life. And that's what God is trying to tell us from these letters. That this word are not written 2,000 years ago to persuade the apostles. They are written for us. The Bible says anybody that has ear, let him listen to what the Spirit of God is saying to the churches. The question tonight is, do you have ear? And if you do have ear, are you listening to what the Spirit is saying to you? That I have the Lord that is saying this word to you is the Lord who is not giving you the key today. He has given you the key before you were born. And this key was there. And that acts that Jesus knew was not there the day Jesus sent the apostle. It was there since Isaiah, more than 2,000 years since Jesus, before Christ was born. So the same thing, your blessing that God is going to lose today, they are not set today. They have been there before you were born. But God is revealing them to you today because he has given you the key. You have not just used it. The reason why you are in the place where there are so much water and you are dying of taste is because you have not fed from the well. And the Lord is saying to you, I know that you have a little strength. You know, today many believers think, oh, if I have money, I would have been able to preach the gospel in 50 villages. I should have been able to spread the gospel from the north and south of Africa. God has been with me. I have the works of the Lord follows me. Signs and wonders are part of the ministry. But the money to do the work is not just there. And I hate to beg. I cannot carry back in the name of the Lord and go from office to office and say, give me 20 naira for the gospel. What will the people say to you? Don't you say the Lord can supply all your needs according to his riches and glory? Now how come you are begging us who are not even believers? Who refuse to believe in your God? The God that supply your needs, why didn't he supply your needs? Why are you here? But the Lord says, if I wait my greatest sword, my hand may hold on judgment. The Lord your God has given you the key. The key is not in the hands of any man. The freedom of the gospel is not in the hands of any man. Just like the freedom of Israel was not in the hands of any priests, it was not in the hands of any man, so is your blessing, your favor, your joy, your healing, your salvation not in the hands of any man. It's not in the hand of the president of a country. It's not in the hand of the governor. It's not in the hand of the minister of finance. Is not in the commune. It's not in any man's hand. Your blessing is in the hands of the Lord. And the Lord said, you shall call upon me and I shall happen unto you. 
and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hear what you have to say. Before you open your mouth, I will answer. While the word is yet in your mouth, I will bring it to pass, says the Lord. I have placed before you an open door. That is what God is saying. Take advantage of it. The door is open. And that no one can shut that door. Today, God is opening a door for you that no power can shut. And he is saying to you, take advantage of it. All you need to do, take advantage of that door. And I know that you may have a little strength. Because believers who the Lord has opened door for, most times have little strength. They have little financial strength. They have little spiritual strength. They have little membership strength. They don't have five million members. Most of them are the missionary church. They are in small villages, farming with the rural dwellers. They don't even believe any man notice their work. They believe they have too much little strength that they are not as important as the big pastors in cities. But the Lord says, yet you have kept my word. That is what is important to me. I know you think your strength is small. But you, in that little strength you have, you did not compromise. You did not deny my name because your strength is small. You did not pull my word aside because you are not rich. And you, and you have not denied my name. That is important to God. You were persecuted, but you kept my name. You were afflicted, but you kept my name. And you did not deny me for anything, nor for silver, nor for gold. And the church of Philadelphia was weak in some aspects. Yet, they had remained faithful in the face of trial. Because of this, the Lord promised them an open door. The only reason why you will have an open door is because when you were weak, when you are denied the opportunity to receive blessing, you remain faithful. That's why the Lord said, anybody that shall remain faithful to the end, <laughs> the Bible said, I will give him the crown of life. Are you remaining faithful in your Christian belief? Or are you going to compromise because you have been praying for that contract for the past 50 years and that contract is not forthcoming? So I don't believe God answered prayer. Maybe God is crying out. So because of that, I have to try out that wish. But God is saying to you, if you remain faithful to the end, he will set before you an open door, a door of blessing which nobody will be able to close. Jesus' letter then condemned the enemies of Philadelphia believers. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan. There are people who belong to the population, who belong to the glory, who think they are sure. They have strength. Who think, oh, with our team, we can move Martin. We have more than 50 million prayer warriors. We have this. We have population. We have the best musical equipment in the world. We have the best team in the world. Oh, we are in 150 countries. But the Lord said they are the synagogue of Satan. Who claim they are Jews, but they are not. They claim to be believers, but they are liars. I will make them to come and fall down and worship at your footstool. The Lord is saying to you, even those people you think they are ahead of you, I will bring them to you. They will come and bow down and worship before you and acknowledge that I have loved you. Because the love that I have shown on you will be mightier than the progress you see in the world. And those who persecute the believer, the persecutors, the persecutor were the religious hypocrite in this case and would one day realize Christ loved his children. The church of Philadelphia would be victorious over their enemies. But I tell you, the beginning is always rough. The beginning is always rough. And that's why the Bible says, though your beginning was small, your later end shall greatly increase. The beginning is always rough because sorrow can endure for the night, but joy surely comes in the morning. And Jesus encouraged the Philadelphia believer regarding his future coming. Since you have kept my command 
to endure patiently. I have also kept you from the hours of trial. You see what the wonderful gift they earn by being patient. Because if you remain patient, perfection will surely come. But if you are not patient as a believer, you will never reach perfection. Nobody passes an exam in school without going through tests. And if you expect as a believer to be promoted without tests, you are a wasted believer. And you are wasting your time. You cannot jump from the beginning to the end. It doesn't work. Nobody wins by cutting corners. You do the hard work. Fold up your garments and your clothes. Do all the hard work. Don't allow the enemy to take advantage of you. Pull up all your fancy garments. All your pride swallow it up. Humble yourself. Take the pain. Endure the suffering. Because the Bible says, they, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel. Do the work of an evangelist. Of an evangelist. Obtain a full proof for the ministry that God has given you. You will rejoice and smile at the end. And I will keep you from the hours of trial. He is talking of the great tribulation. The hour of the great tribulation. The Lord says, if you keep the word of my patience, I will keep you away from the great tribulation. That means you will not be on earth to experience the torment of the Antichrist. I will take you away before that time. I will translate you before that day. If you keep the word of God, the Lord is a promise from Jesus Christ. And we know that he has never failed his promise so far. He promised us the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit today. He promised us healing. We have healing today. He promised us deliverance. We have deliverance. There is nothing He promised us that has not come to pass. If all the other promises has come to pass, believe me, this promise will also come to pass. Though it's a future promise, but it will surely come to pass. Since you have kept the word of the Lord patient, He will also keep you from the hour of trial. That is coming upon all the whole world. It's not the one that is coming upon. It's not. So some people will say we have tribulation today as Christians. It's not talking of tribulation that happened only in Africa or the one that happened in Africa. But we are talking of tribulation that will try the whole world as a test to those who live on earth. And it's talking about those who live on earth. The very kind of people God is talking about here are the earth dwellers. The people that the world is their own. The people that love this beautiful world. These are the earth dwellers. These are not prudent. It's not talking about prudence here. It's talking about the earth dwellers. Because he promised us that we will not suffer his wrath. Because if we keep the word of his patience, the Lord will keep us from the hour of tribulation. But if we do not keep the word of his patience, he will not keep us from the hour of tribulation. Because this test we are talking about is not test on some country, it's test on all who dwells on the earth. And I am coming soon. The Lord told you here that he is coming soon. How soon is he soon? I don't know. When he returns, we will see him. We know we will see him as he is. And if we are dead before then, we shall be quickened. This mortality will put on immortality. And we believe that as many of us who are still alive and remain in the days of the Lord will not prevent those that are asleep. But the death in Christ shall rise first. So it doesn't matter whether we live or die, yet in our flesh we will see the Lord. That's why Job, who was the first from Adam, believed that though one eat up his flesh, yet he will got a new skin. Because in his reign he will see the Lord. If you believe you will see the Lord, you should believe you will see the Lord. Hold on to what you have. So the Bible is telling you, despite all these promises I have made to you, do not relax. The battle is not over. Fight on, Christian, fight on. The battle is not yet over. As a believer, while you are still breathing on earth, the battle is not over. Keep fighting. Fight on till the end. Hold on to what you have so that no man will take away your crown. There are people that will deceive you, say you, 
Oh, your Christianity, an old archaic Christianity. Now let me introduce you into a new form of Christianity. The Bible says you should hold on to the end so that no man will steal your garments. This man is doing this so that he can steal your garments. The devil has many evangelists. He has many prophets. He has many religious leaders. He has many Bible scholars. And the devil even has many choristers. And they are coming to deceive you, to take away your crown. But be careful, my brother. Just as you should know that we are not in those days in the village where you know who is a thief. Because the thief dress different from the normal people. But now, in the city, the thief dress like normal gentleman. And they are even with suit and tie. Corporate thief. So, brethren, you don't know who is a corporate thief among you in the ministry. The unbelievers are not separated from believers. It is different. We are in a difficult world. Today you can hardly identify the difference between a Christian and a harlot. It can be a harlot by night and a Christian by day. It can be a thief by night and a pastor by day. You may not know who he is. That's why you must hold on to what you have. So that no man will take away your crime. And that's why Revelation chapter 3 from verse 10 to 11 warns us <laughs> Revelation chapter 3 from verse 10 to 11. Let us read. Revelation 3 from verse 10 to 11. I read. Because you have regarded and kept my word of patience and endurance, and have held fast the lessons of my patience with the expect with the expectant endurance that I have given you, I will also keep you safe from the hours of trial or testing which is coming on the whole world to try those that dwell on earth. Eleven, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have, so that no man rob you and deprive you of your crown. Hold it on. Don't let the thief, because the thief, they don't write it on the forehead. There is no label tag on a man's head and say this is a thief or this is not. This is a righteous man. This is a thief. No, there is no label. You will not know the difference between a thief and a righteous man. A, a thief can sometimes carry a Bible to your heart, dress like a reverend father or even dress like a priest or a pastor and come to your house with a gun to rob. So be careful. Because the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But the Lord said to you tonight, He has come so that you might have life and have it more in abundance. Brethren, the Bible remember the word and the faithful saying of the apostle of the Lord to you. They said to you, If an angel come in the name of the Lord, but he bringeth not the same gospel you have received from the beginning, let angel be accused. And if a pastor or a preacher of the gospel, a prophet who sees and hears from God, he says a thing and it come to pass. But if he say to you, let us go and follow other God, he say, let that prophet be cursed. So brethren, mark the word of the Lord. The scripture which you have received was given by inspiration of God. They are teachable for doctrine, for reproof, and for correction, so that every man of God can be equipped with every good work. Brethren, this scripture was not given by, by men. It was given by God's inspiration. And they are teachable for you to understand the doctrine of God. And to, to be reproved and to be corrected. So that you as a servant or the man of God can be equipped in every good work. So brethren, if the Bible cannot confirm your dream, throw away the dream. If your, the Bible cannot confirm the prophecy and the vision you receive, let it go. It does not confirm the word of God. Throw it away. What does the Lord say regarding things? He says, all authority has been given to you. That means you can change the things you don't like. If the dream does not fit to the plan of God, change the dream to fit into his plan. The Bible says, let that which is laid not be thrown out of the way, but let it rather be healed. So whatever in your life does not fit into God's plan and God's salvation and expectation for your life, 
take it, shape it, polish it, and put it in line with what God is saying. The Bible says that the church that is faithful to the end and serve the Lord, the Lord will give him his crown. But if you allow the thief to rob you of your crown, you have nobody to build. Remember what the Bible says. It says the wise man built his house upon the rock. Why does he build his house upon the rock so that he can watch and see who is coming? He will know when the thief is coming and he will be able to secure his house. But the foolish man built his house upon the sand. When the rain fall and the wind blow, what will happen? The Bible says, Great is the fall of the house. So if you build your house upon the sand, you have, will have nobody to blame. At the end, you will suffer loss. Because great will be the fall of your house. The church faithful endurance will serve as a blessing. Jesus will take them to be with him before the coming tribulation. That is what he promised us in Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 13 to 18. Let us read. Thessalonians. We are talking about 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. From verse 13 to 18. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. I read. Now also we would not have you be ignorant brethren. About those who fall asleep in death, that you may not grieve for them as the rest do, who have no hope beyond the grave. But since we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so, we God bring with him through Jesus those who have fallen asleep in death. But since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will also bring with him through Jesus those who have fallen asleep in death. 15. For this we declare to you by the Lord own word. That we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall in no way proceed into his presence or have any advantage at all over those who have previously fallen asleep in him in death. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a loud cry of a sound, with the shout of an archangel. And with the blast of the trump of God, and those who have departed this life in Christ will rise first. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a loud cry of His Son, with a shout, a shout of an archangel, and with the blast of the trumpet of God, and those who have departed this life in Christ will rise first. And then we, the living one, who remains on earth shall spontaneously be cut up along with the resurrected dead in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. So always, through the eternity of eternity, we shall be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort and encourage one and other with this word. The Lord just told us that our encouragement is that the death in Christ or the living will not precede the death in Christ, but we all will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. We exhort them to re that remain be faithful because this would lead to the reward in the afterlife. Based on this and other passages, many Bible interpreters conclude that the rapture is an event distinct. From the second coming of Christ. The fact that the Philadelphians are promised to be preserved from the time of tribulation correspond with the pre tribulation view of the rapture. Jesus provides a final promise to the believer in Philadelphia and all believers who overcome. I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. A pillar. Somebody will wonder, what's a pillar? I don't want to be a pillar or a block. But what he's talking about is, idiomatically speaking, a founder in the house of the Lord. 
pillar is that which holds the house. A pillar is the man who is the church name. And he said, if you overcome, the church will rest upon you. The blessing, the favor of the church will rest upon you. You will become a pillar in the house of the God. Him who overcome will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Nevertheless, when we talk about God's temple, somebody will say, why do you not say church? Christ is writing to the church. He's using the word temple. In the earth, yes, we understand from the book of Isaiah that there shall be a temple during the tribulation. And this temple, there will also be a second temple during the return of Christ, which is the new Jerusalem. And God is saying that it will be a temple, not in the tribulation, but in the new Jerusalem. Not the church, because the church age is over. Sorry to disappoint you. The church will not be after the rapture. Nevertheless, never again will I, will he leave it. That means you will be perfected in the Lord. That means your righteousness in God will be complete. That means as God is perfect, so you will be perfect. You will no more go away from the presence of God. That is an, a wonderful blessing. You will no longer have the fear of falling into sin if you believe in God. And I will write on him the name of my God. You will be holy enough to be the carrier of God's name and the name of the city of my God. And the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from God. And I will also write on him my new name. God promised that he will not just honor overcomer by erecting pillars in their name in heaven, as was the custom in Philadelphia. He will make them pillar in the spiritual temple of God, the new Jerusalem. We can Check through this what this pillar means in Galatians 2 verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 to 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 6 to 16, Ephesians 2 verse 19 to 22, and 1 Peter 2 verse 4 to 10. All these are speaking about pillar in the house of our God. So those who struggle with weakness, Jesus made everlasting pillar in the house of God. They struggle with weakness of falling away from God because of fear and torment. But now God has promised them stability. Pillars stand for stability because prayer brings stability to the house. And Jesus is promising you he would stabilize you. And he will make you faithful to the end. You will no more go away from his presence. No matter whatever happened in the world, you will be preserved. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. That is what Jesus says. In Philippians 4 verse 3, Jesus' word to comfort setting would have been blessing to the Philadelphia who have faithfully understood by Christ in their pagan culture. This word continue to serve as an encouragement to faithful believers especially the missionary church today. The missionary church, the Philadelphia church, generational speaking, represents the missionary church. Those who have little strength, no financial ability, no power, but yet they remain faithful to God to the end. And they did not defy their crown. And Christ is saying they should hang on. They should not give up because the first prophet rather spent millions on private jets rather than to spend money on the work that God has called them for. But the missionary church may have little finance, little ability to spread the gospel, little knowledge in taking the gospel to the lost. But Christ says, I am with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. And this word should be enough encouragement for every believer. The Lord is saying to us, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a loud cry and a sound, with the shout of an archangel. And he is saying that the dead in Christ shall rise first. 
If the death in Christ shall rise for us, what happens to we who are alive? The Lord says that we that remain will be caught up to meet with the Lord in the air. So shall we be ever with our God. Revelation 3 verse 9 says, Take note, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan those of the synagogue of Satan who claim to be Jewish people but they are not but liar behold I will make them come and bow down before your feet and learn and acknowledge that I have loved you I will show to the world that I the Lord loved you and that's why God decided to pick the name Philadelphia which symbolizes the symbol of love love that if those people who are of this synagogue of Satan refuse to repent, I will bring them to you to bow before you, to show to the world that the love of God passes human understanding. And God Himself is going to reveal His love in those that put His confidence, that put their confidence in Him. Take note, I will invest ten, He said, because you have guided. And kept the word of my patience. I have and has held fast the lesson of my patience with expectant endurance that I give you, and we also keep you from the hour of temptation. What a wonderful thing to be kept from the hour of temptation. Are you ready to for God to keep you from the hour of temptation? If you kept the word of his patience, God promised he will keep you from the hour of temptation. And this hour of temptation is coming at a test, not just to some believer, but to everyone that lives upon the surface of the earth. Brethren, today, what preparation do you have? Are you of the others of the Church of Ladosha who think because you have a little strength, and you are weak, you want a new cathedral you cannot get, you want money for the ministry you cannot even get, the mission is suffering, charity is suffering because you, it's not because you are not willing to give, because God knows your heart, and because He knows your work, He knows the things that are hidden in secret, He knows the thoughts of your heart. He knows that it is not that you are not willing to give to the poor. It is because you have no money to give to the poor. He knew that it is not because you are not ready to go for mission to preach his word. It is because you have no money to go for mission to preach to the poor. He knew that your church would have preferred a small hall when you return for mission so that you can gather together and pray there to the Lord for the Holy Spirit. But you have no money. The Lord also understands that you would have preferred to be with your team in the field, but rather you have to work so that you can support the team, as, as Paul also did. When Paul, though he was constantly in the field, he has to stop in the house of the sale of occupation, who were tent maker, to join them to make pens so that he can raise resources for himself for the ministry. God understood this. He knew that you have a little strength. But he knew that despite that little strength, you came to his name. You did not deny his name. You are still doing the little you can to make sure that the gospel of the kingdom is not only preached, but is preached to all men as a testimony. So that the work of God be not blasphemed. And God understood this. And he's saying to you, because you have kept the word, I will also keep you from the hour of trial. I will also keep you from the hour of trial. And the Lord is saying to you that because you are poor, you are done, you have nothing. I has given you the key of the kingdom of heaven. The key that many believers have been fasting, praying for, I have given it to you freely. Today, you will use that key to open any door and no man will be able to shut it. But today, you will use it to open the doors of the things that are lacking. In the house of the Lord, the Lord said, No power will be able to shut, to shut, to shut, cycle you or to shut, circuit you out of it. That blessing that the Lord has promised the saints 
will be delivered to you in the appropriate time. And that is one of the reasons why he says in verse 11 that I am coming quickly. The Lord is coming quickly. If we, the church, all come to the standard of the Lazarusian church, the missionary church, we, we all expect the Lord any moment from now. Because you know why the Christians, every day we say the Lord's prayer, we always say it's our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If we want God's will to be done on earth as it is done in heaven, we need his kingdom to come. Because the earth, no matter how secure place we live on earth, the earth can never be like the way we want it. We will still see the poor being trampled upon. We will still see the rich take advantage of the poor. We will still see the poor or the weak people are being oppressed on daily basis. But the only way we can excel in the world is if God's kingdom come. And that's why as believers, our prayer from today should be, Lord, thy kingdom come. Because this is exactly what he said he should do. But how can his kingdom come if the great commission is not finished? And the gospel of the kingdom, remember what he said. Before the end can come, this gospel of the kingdom should be preached as a testimony to all nations. Only then can the end come. But if we refuse to preach this gospel of the kingdom, the end will never come. And that's why today we challenge you. My brothers, sisters, I challenge you in the name of the Lord. Take up some few tracts. Go to people who have never heard about him. Share more gospel. Every member you give the tract to, it makes a difference. Don't say, okay, I can only preach to four or five people. What difference does it make in the world of almost about eight billion people? But let me tell you the truth. A young man once goes to the rivers with his son to fish. And while they were in the river, the father breaks some piece of bread, more bread, and throw it into the river. And the son says, Father, that bread you throw into the river is just a small more bread. What difference will it make in the multitude of fishes? And the father takes another piece of more bread, break it and throw it into the river, and said to the son, This makes all the difference. And that's exactly what I'm telling you today. Your ministration to one soul makes all the difference. If your ministration to the person who you think is your enemy makes all the difference. Whether he is a friend or an enemy, it makes all the difference. One friend at a time, one brother at a time, one relative at a time, the whole world will be saved. And God has fed us to finish this great commission because we will not be happy for the devil to present God's children on the last day as a trophy around his waist that he has won in battle. But we would rather want all men to be saved. And that is not, it is not the will of God that any soul should perish. His will is that all men should come to repentance. And that's why we should strive to make sure, though we cannot force men to come to God, that we can pray that God should draw men to himself. So that we will not be a trophy for the devil. So that our relative will not be a trophy for the devil. So that our friends and brothers, our street men, our town men, our countrymen will not be a trophy for the devil. That no matter the evil that is in the world, God will deliver us out of it. And that's why we should pray that his kingdom should come. So that the evil and the injustice in the world can cease. Because if his kingdom does not come, there is no way we can end the injustice. There is no way, no matter the complaint we complain, no man by complaining can change one hair in his head to either black or white. All complaint will not solve the problem. All we can do is to go and weakness. You want to change the world? Go take some tracks. Weakness to your brother, weakness to your sister. Join the next nearest open house fellowship close to you. And if you have no one in your area, write to us. Go to our website at CGFLS. 
Login.app. Ask for tracks. Ask for materials. Go online. Search the website. Study the scripture for yourself. Go through the course. Open your own open house fellowship. Get your own convert. And by so doing, you are making all the difference in the world. Save one soul at a time. Just like Elisha, we might have a little strength. We believe the Lord has given us the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That whatever we bound on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we lose on earth is losing heaven. And we know if we are able to keep the word of his patience, the Lord our God will also keep us from the hour of tribulation that is coming to try all them that dwells upon the earth. And the Lord says to us that he who overcome, if you are victorious, I will give, make you a pillar. That means you will become the foundation in the house of the Lord. And that means you will be the physical support that hold the temple of the Lord. And the Lord is saying that you will never go out of it. That means your salvation will be permanent. Your deliverance will be permanent. Your blessing will be permanent. Your healing will be permanent. Your joy will be filled. There will be no going backward. There will be no going sideways. The Lord your God will be your eternal light. He will be your eternal excellence. Only if you overcome. But today, are you ready to overcome? If, if you are ready to overcome, the Lord is saying to you today, just come to Him. Hold on to that which you have. Hold it on. Don't let it slide from your hand. God is not going to put upon you additional load. The only load you have as a believer, just keep it. Keep it to the end. And the Lord said, hold it on to the end, you will be saved. It's only those who are able to hold on to what they have to the end that will be saved. There is no salvation in other name. There is no name under heaven given among men by which we can be saved. Other than the name of Jesus Christ. Today, if you hear his word, harden not your heart. As in the days of provocation in the wilderness, when your father heard his word, and they provoke him. For 40 years he was wrought with that generation. And he swore in his word that they would not enter into his rest. The father has sworn in his word that they would not enter into his rest. The Bible says in the beginning on the seventh day God rested. Therefore, how therefore speak he after the seven days, in a certain part of the seven days, that they would not enter into his rest. That means there remained a rest for God's people. And the Father, some of us do enter in. But they that to whom the word of God came did not enter in. You know why? Because of unbelief. But today, many may not still enter in because of unbelief. If you have the spirit of unbelief in you, let there not be any spirit of unbelief in you. Because unbelief hindered the people to whom the message came from entering into life. But today, if you happen unto his word, harden not your heart, and you will be able to enter into it. Today, brethren, the door is open. Jesus is standing at the door of your heart tonight, and he's knocking. If you will hear his voice, open the door of your heart. He will come into you. He will stay with you, and you with him. Brethren, that is the end of our message. Today, Jesus is knocking, and he's still knocking in the door of every church. He's knocking in the heart of every member. He's knocking at the door of your job, the door of your business. Oh, you in that hospital bed, the Lord is knocking right now beside your bed. If you will only hear him, harden not, not your heart. Listen to what he has to say. The Lord is in the business of drawing people to himself. Today, the Lord is still able to draw you. It is not too late. We still have a short time. The grace has not yet been taken from the earth. The extension of grace will soon expire. When they expire, there will be no more salvation. Today is the acceptable day. Today is the day of deliverance. Because tomorrow might be too late. If you come to him today, you might still save your life. The Lord is calling you to himself. If you believe that the Lord is drawing you 
and you want to come to him today so that you will be among those that will be made a pillar in the house of the Lord that will go no more out anymore. Just say this word after me. Lord Jesus, I have decided to come to you. I have decided that I do not want to be on earth in the period of the great tribulation. I want to be with you so that where you are, because you said in your word, where you are, here will your servant be also. Lord, I return to you with all my heart. I confess you with my mouth and I believe you from my heart that you are the Lord, that God raised you from the dead, that you are the Lord Jesus Christ. Save me by your grace and by your blood that was shed for me on the cross of Calvary. If you have said this word, the salvation of the Lord is paramount in your life. And today I will pray for you. Today, Lord God of hosts, more than these numbers have joined the two billions of people who has made decisions for Christ around the world. Lord God of hosts, I say today, and this one lift up your voice. May their voice never be drowned in heaven. Lord, when you shall come to gather home your saints, they will be in the number. Lord, as you shall keep us from the hour of temptation that is coming to try the whole world, all these ones also will be kept from it. Their sins are forgiven because you said to me, who you have given me the keys of David, that whatever I bound on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever I lose on earth is lost in heaven. Father Lord, I stand upon that authority and I say their sins are forgiven. Their iniquity are pardoned and their guilt are taken away. Father, therefore, everything that disturbs them in their life is bound. Sickness is bound away from their life. Affliction is taken away from their life. Poverty loses grip and gallops. And I say to you, unemployment, Remove your hand from their business and let them go. And I said to you, you spirit of bondage, the Lord has set this one free and they are free indeed. The Lord has set this one free and they are free indeed. There is now there no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation for these ones. They are free and they are free indeed. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Brethren, God bless you. We will see you again next Sunday by 5 p.m. on Understanding Prophecy. Next Sunday, we shall be looking at the last church, the Church of Theatera. The Church of Theatera. And God is expecting every believer to listen to this message. If you have missed any of the letter to the churches, you can see it on our website at cgfnslogin.app. cgfnslogin.app. God bless you. As you listen, amen.